Right, as you can see, I'm sat here with former 1980s and 70s footballer, Mr. Mark Dennis. Now, he looks extremely serious at the moment, like he's being interrogated by the police. Um, but it's not, a, <laughs> it's not as serious as that. Um, I'm Sean from English Football in the 80s, um, and we've had some lovely questions from our members, from Mark, and he's agreed to sit down and have a nice breakfast with me here this morning in the retro diner in Shirley in Southampton. That's Neil, the owner over here. Um, so I'll kick things off by asking Mr Dennis, would you last a full 90 minutes in today's game without getting sent off? Well, that's a very, very good question because in the 80s there were players, I mean, you played with your heart on your sleeve and you got stuck in, basically. I think today, Sean, is almost become a non-contact sport. Yeah. Uh, and that is the problem. And you can't get close to referees. Yeah. I think in my day, I remember playing Bristol City and Jerry Gale, I'd done him, gone over the top, I must say, gone over the top with a tackle. And Clive Thomas, Clive the Book Thomas, was a referee. And I saw him go for his red, his red card, and I thought, oh, here we go. He'd come over to me. But before he got there, I put my arm round him. I said, Clive, I'm sorry. I got there as quickly as I could. And he had to laugh. He laughed and changed it for his yellow. So yeah. there was a little bit of banter there. I was very fortunate that day. But we, we'd had a little bit of history, me and Jerry Gale. And uh, it was it was dog eat dog in them days. Yeah. But I think today, the only way I would have stayed on the pitch, I would have had to adapt yeah. Yeah, you, to what they do now. Would you... Would it be fair to say that, that would, you'd lose part of your game there as well because the aggression was... Yeah, I'd probably lose part of my game, but that's up to the coaches and the management team. When I played under Laurie McMenemy, he yeah. was a great manager. He's a man manager, and that's up to them to get the best out of me in another way. Yeah, yeah. But I think I could have adapted, but uh, I probably would would have been off still probably a couple of times a season, not as many as before. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, we've also got um, a question from Nick L.O. And he asks, Mark, which modern day player is most comparable to your playing style? Who would you say that playing today that reminds you of you? Uh, to, to be fair, go, going forward, I have to say, is, is Bertie Bertram. Yeah. He, he's, he, he probably hasn't got my strength in the tackle, but he's got a great... He's got a great engine, he gets up and down, and his delivery when he gets to the byline is absolutely superb. Should he have gone to the World Cup, do you think? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I think it was a schoolboy error. Even though we done well, people say we've done well, I don't think we've done as well as we could have done, because if you look at our run, it was quite easy through. Yeah. But Bertram gives, gives you that outlet. Yeah, yeah. He's, he, he's magnificent, and yeah. he's a good lad as well. Yeah, he's good. He's a very intelligent lad, and he Look, looks after his stuff off the field as well. I think he's quite savvy with that. Um, Rob Clark asks, what is, who is your most difficult opponent? So, hardest player you come up against? I had some, I had Mark Ward, but I always, we used Mark Ward of West Ham, we used to have battles and fights, it, 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 hit each other off the ball, but obviously there was not scrutiny there is today when I played. But I, it was my, Ward, the little winger. Yeah, yeah Mark yeah. Ward, a little uh, Liverpudlian. He went off the rails, didn't he? Quite he did badly. when I rubbed, we used to have some battles, mm. and enjoyable battles as well. But uh, I, I like to say, I did get a better of him. But my hardest player was Jimmy Neighbour, going right. back into the uh, late 70s, playing for Birmingham. He was at Norwich, mm. and he'd been at Tottenham before. And he was a fantastic winger, and he, was, he wasn't quick, but he was dinky. Mm. And that's the only player I struggled with. Any other, all the quick players, because I was very quick, I didn't have no problem. But I'd have to say Jimmy Neighbour, as much as I hate saying it, Jimmy was, he was decent. A lot of people, that I've, a lot of ex-pros that I've spoken to have said that Kenny Dalglish is was difficult to play against. Did you? Well, I, I, Kenny was hard. I, he he come over to the right. What he used to think was stick his backside into you, mm. and you, you couldn't get the ball. He's probably the best shielder yeah. next to Mark Hughes at, at yeah, the ball Hughes. I've ever seen. And he used to stick his backside in you. But I think, yeah, Kenny was a great player. But I didn't see a lot of Kenny. I think he stayed out my way because it was on the right. He played, <laughs> up front, he played off a rush. Yeah. And that's where they were good. But uh, no, definitely Jimmy Neighbour for me. Cool. Um, hardest man you've ever faced? That's from Robert Clayton. The hardest man I ever faced was, uh, I would say, uh, when I played against Jimmy Case. I yeah. played with the hardest man. I've ever done, and I, I'd have put him above Sunes as well. Yeah. Jimmy was a quiet assassin. 
Yeah. And I'll tell you what, he was fantastic. He once said to me at Southampton, someone had, had done me by the thing, he saw me, I was like to get it back. And he came over, he said, Deno, he said, leave it to me, I've got him in my little black book. <laughs> second half, about 70, 79, 80 minutes, wallop, you heard a scream, and Jimmy had done it, he didn't get booked, he done it very well. And as soon as he's done it, his arm was round the referee, and he was, he was trying to help the player yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very cute, and the hardest by far. But he, he was also, you know, he was a, a talented player as well, wasn't he? Oh, he, could, he could pass a fun. He could pass, and also scored your goals. Yeah, yeah I remember, well, he was... Yeah. He was in the same side that, you know, when I first started watching Saints. So it was like you, Case, Jerry Forrest, Absolutely. good player, wasn't he? Um, you, you know the names, and like, yeah. Case was brilliant. He had a good end of his career at Brighton as well, didn't he? Fantastic. Never um, played we, for We England. actually brought him from Brighton. Yeah. So brought him from Brighton. He's, he's, he stayed there, and then when he stayed for Saints, done amazingly well but what he was good at as well he was always ahead of the Christmas parties oh, yeah, and we had one drink a week we had a good drinking school in there nice. me, Casey Frank Woods and Kevin Bond they, they, they were some fantastic drinkers Mickey Mills yeah. and it was we never hardly lost at the deal when we finished second in 84 yeah. when we lost Notts County across as a league title we'd done the double over Liverpool M missed Missed it by, I think, two points in the championship the game second. Those were two points for a win, wasn't it, back yeah. then as well? But we always, our motto was, win or lose, have a boost. Yeah. And, and great how, did, how was Laurie McMenemy about that? Did he used to like, let you get away with it as long as you performed well, I on that? I don't the... think Laurie knew too much about it. And when he did, there was hefty fines given out. OK. I don't, I'll, let's go on the next one. The best atmosphere that you ever played in, that's from Mark Jelfs. Uh, I'll tell you what, I have to say, I played down at uh, West Ham, yeah. where they had the chicken run. Yeah, yeah. And there was like 35,000 in there, but it was absolutely electric. I'll tell you, when you went, you couldn't hardly hear nothing. And I'll tell you what, they're quite unsavoury characters down there. Oh, yeah. And uh, it, that was great. But there was bigger grounds, but they didn't have the atmosphere. I think, I, I'm a bit old Trafford since, but people, when it going back, it didn't have the grounds. Aston Villa was a great atmosphere. Yeah. But West Ham, when you was penned in, and don't forget the deal. When yeah. we had like 23,000 in that deal, and you could almost touch the players. Yeah, That's yeah. where the atmosphere is. Under the, the evening games, under the floodlights there. Oh. Well, it was, when I was playing, it was a fortress. Yeah. People ate, ate, we was beating them. Five fours or four nils, seven nils, eight nils, it, it was ridiculous. Yeah, it's great, great time to follow football for me, that was. Um, so we've got. Do you, this is from James Garrett, he asks, do you think you should have had a shout playing for England ahead of Kenny Sanson? Oh, I do. I, do. I know Kenny, and Kenny's going through a bad stage at yeah. the moment with everything. We wish him well. Yeah, yeah. Because he's a great lad. But yeah, I think, but I, think I was. I was my own worst enemy uh, with my record and Bobby Rodson called me up in 82 but he, he said to me that I couldn't be trusted because it was England. He, he actually written in his book he was, I was the best left back. Uh, he should have never played for England really. Obviously he had the 21s in England B I did. I think that, like um, certainly I mean a lot of a lot of Saints fans that I know would consider you to be like our best ever left back, or certainly our favourite left back. I'd, I'd, I'd have to, I'd have to go. While there was, there was one Stevie Mills, which yeah. was absolutely fantastic. It would have, been, that would have been a close one. And then you had Bridgie. Bridgie yeah, Bridgie was, was brilliant. Bridgie was magnificent. Then you have it. You've got Bertie now coming through. Gareth Bale was a good left, but he wasn't really a left back. No. He was always a left back. I don't think you can put him in that category. He was still little though, then, wasn't he? And you've then got, when he, you've he got beefed Luke up. Shaw, and we speak about Luke Shaw, but Luke Shaw ain't gonna last. He's gonna have problems with his. Way. Yeah, and we always knew that when he was a teenager. Yeah, uh, things and he struggled at Man United. He's having a good run at the moment, but I wouldn't put him up in with the ones I've just said. No, no, definitely. Okay, um, we've got. If coloured boots were available back when you played, would you have worn them? No, <laughs> definitely not. What boots They're did you used to wear? I, I wore. I was sponsored by Nike for a bit, but I watched. I wore Adidas. I wore that Adidas boots, I used to like the copy on the heels. Yeah, top. yeah. And also, and then I was sponsored by Adidas. No, black and white. Black, black and white all the way. No. Yeah, same. Well, I've got to agree with you on that one. Um, we've got Neil Smithson asked, which team did you prefer to play at, Birmingham or Southampton? Come on. Well, there was a, for me, as much as I follow Birmingham, and I love Birmingham because it was my first club I've gone there, Southampton had something special for me. I had mm. my best football there. My best days there. I still live here. Yeah. And 
and really I don't have to answer it. I'm going to say <laughs> Southampton because I've, I've, I've explained it anyway. Yeah, by far. What was your Birmingham's best? still in my mind. What was your best memories of playing for Birmingham? Uh, I had some good moments getting promotion. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. There's Division One promotion, which was great. We had we had a couple of good FA Cup runs. We lost to Tottenham in quarters and the semis. What managers did you play under for Birmingham? I played I played under uh, Freddie Goodman was first one. Sir Ralph Ramsey was our kept taker boss. He was great, Sir Ralph Ramsey. And then Jim Smith came along. He was yeah. great manager, Jim Smith. Unfortunately, he went to that lot over there. Yeah, he went down the road, which was a problem. He he come back. He come to Southampton eventually, didn't he? But he didn't have a very good uh, reception as he was here with Mr. Redknapp. So no, that's uh, right, absolutely. He's a swear word in my house, that man. That's right. Um, <laughs> but also we had Ron Saunders there, and I couldn't get on with Ron Saunders. He was a complete and utter dipstick, as right. far as I was concerned. Yeah. But, uh, uh, it was a shame he'd done well at Villa, but he'd gone to Birmingham purely for money, and he just wrecked the side, which sometimes happens. Yeah, I've seen it happen many times. Um, which ground did you least like playing at and why? Goodison Park, without a thing. I, only, I never won at Goodison Park in all my time as a Saints. I had a couple of draws and lost it. It was just a complete and utter bogey ground for me. And I think it still is for us. Yeah, well, I, I can't recall whether we've won there recently. Yeah, and they've, they've done us in the FA Cup no, semi-final as no, well, haven't they? Yes. Well, I don't remember, we, Adrian Eve extra time and we battered them yeah. at Highbury. But the one recently, we was one up and they scored right in the death in, in minutes over time. Yeah. And we got a draw, which killed me. Have you, this is another one from Neil Smithson, have you considered doing an autobiography? I have. I did, people have asked me to write books and done things, but with my family, I have my daughters and thing around, I didn't want to bring it, but I, I might do it. I, I was asked recently to do a book, and now they've got older and all that, yeah. And, uh, well, you're, you're sat with a published writer now, Miss, so bear, right. bear me in mind if you ever fancy doing that. I'll well, be I your ghostwriter. We always said the, the ghostwriter. I've, I've got the name for it, The Life and Times of Dirty Dead, <laughs> which uh, I think will be a good book. Good best seller, especially London Right, here we go. Do you remember your first under 21 cap and the players you played with that night? I can, I can. We, we, it was at Phil, Filbert Street. I was certainly at Filbert Street. I played Terry Butcher. Yeah. Uh, played with me. Justin Fashionu. Yeah. But uh, we all know Justin. He, Did you he play with him at Saints? Or was no, that before no, your he, time? No, he, uh, he came afterwards. Yeah. And uh, no, he. He was a nice lad, Justin. Yeah. Obviously, you all know he all came out and was the first gay player. Yeah. You know, fortunately, I didn't run with him that day, which was... He had a, which, he had a lot of personal problems as well, though, didn't he? Absolutely. He was a banana boy and uh, things. But L- Laurie had him down there for a bit, didn't keep him too long. Yeah. He yeah, uh, come on loan, didn't he? Yeah. Who else was in the side that night? Uh, t- t- uh, Terry Butcher. Brian, a young, a very young Brian Robson played as well. Really? Yeah. Is that when he still had his palm? That's right. He <laughs> he was, I think he was at West Brom in them days. Uh, John Lukic was goalkeeper. Oh, Lukic. Uh, 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 a lot of players that went on to have a good career then. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Because yeah, Lukic was around for years, wasn't he? At Arsenal and Leeds. Absolutely. Um, right, Gavin Axton asks, can you elaborate on the Palace v Spurs game when you ran the length of the pitch to deck Gaza? I remember that, yeah, uh, when I was playing for Crystal Palace against Spurs, he had, he had done... Uh, he had done someone off the ball and was trying to get involved in something and I, I think a bit of mist just come over me and I run the length of the field and put the referee just, just got him basically, don't want to elaborate on that no more. <laughs> <laughs> what was he like to play against? Oh, he's a tremendous player, yeah. absolutely player, but when he, he didn't like me as Lineker didn't like me because I'd always talk into their face yeah. uh, and, and put them off. Yeah. That game actually, Gary Lineker got carried off. Well, I saw. I said to you earlier. I saw him last night, and he he said like when he was talking that he didn't he didn't like players that would get in his face, and like he talks about Vinnie Jones and one or two others, and yeah, if you could get in in his head, he would crumble a little bit. Yeah. But um, yeah, wonderful player though. Absolutely, hit the onion bag all the time. Yeah. Did you enjoy your time at QPR? 
I had three great years at QPR. I have to say I was so disappointed to leave Southampton because Chris Nicholl, I, I didn't get on with Chris. I get on with him now and yeah. God bless him. He's, he's not very well, he's is he? He's not very well at all. But I once said to everyone that he, he had as much personality as a tennis racket. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it, it was unbelievable. And what really put me over the edge was when he sold Andy Townsend oh, to yeah. Norwich for 300,000 and he didn't get, didn't get a kick on clause. Yeah. For it. And then Mark Wright went to Derby, Shields went to Derby, and he, he wrecked the team. Didn't Townsend agitate for that move a little bit though, didn't he? He, he, he was a bit of a. I'm, I'm sure I remember him being a. Well, I, th I think uh, with me there was a lot of disruption in the camp, and a lot of the players didn't like Chris. Oh, right. Because of his personality and the way he wouldn't give you a new contract. He actually thought the money was his. Yeah, yeah. And keep me, I don't know if he took it personally. Person. And he did, and I couldn't. And when I went to. Uh, QPR, it, it was a gutter for me. I, I was devastated if you ask anyone close to me. But I got down to QPR and I got friends with Terry Fennick, Warren Neal, Alan McDonald, but not with us no more, uh, Johnny Pudgy Byrne, we, we, we had some Paul Parker. And I, I had three lovelies. We, we finished third once right. year. And, fit, and the Bald Eagle was our manager down there. Yeah, Jim Smith was there. Was Gary Bannister there Gary as well? Gary Bannister He's was good there. player, wasn't he? And we played on the plastic, and that ruined me knee. I've got a false knee now, I think that. Because that was hard in yeah. But I had three great years at Rangers. I loved it. I loved it. Not, not, I did, not the love as I've got for Southampton, but I absolutely really enjoyed my time there. They made me feel really welcome. Good, yeah. Jim, Jim Smith strikes me as someone that's nice to play under as well. Well, when I, I come back to Southampton, uh, we won one nil. Kevin Brock scored. Yeah, I remember Kevin uh, Brock. Kevin Brock scored at the Dell. We won, and the, the reception they gave was just unbelievable. And the Saints supporters gave me was just unbelievable. And I'm a way supporter. They just so I chant my name, Neil Gant. It was, and I didn't, I didn't really, I don't think I deserved that. It was a nice gesture from. Uh, class, as always, from Southampton. Um, is it true you got it on the head with a 50p at Fratton Park? I don't know if it was a 50p. Uh, I don't know if they were about. Were they about in 84? It was some sort of coin, anyway. It was some sort of coin, which I didn't have stitch, but uh, I had butterfly stitches. Uh, oh. but I think that was a great thing, because from that extra time I was down, I took the throw and went across and we scored. Yeah, Steve Moran. And the, the atmosphere that day, I've got to say, was unbelievable. 38,000 in Fratton Park, we had all one end, and when we scored, it was unbelievable. It was just, but we ran off the pitch, because if you remember, the pitch was invaded, they were yeah. throwing bananas at Danny Wallace, and, and uh, coins, and Laurie McMenemy's suit was covered in phlegm, where they all spat over and we got in there, but... And Animals. I, and I always remember Fred Dynage, because Fred just, was, and I know Fred, he's escaped. And we come out the room and Lloyd said, stay in the room. He said, well, I, mean, I said, no, me and Mark Wright and Mills, he said, oh, we're going for a drink, we're buzzing. Just beat the, just one of our local derby. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I walked out and Fred was there. I said, all right, Fred. And he went, I won't use the word. He went, you few bastard. <laughs> Fred, he apologised to me not so long afterwards. He was fuming. I've got one here. What happened? This is from your mate Paul Shears. Shearsy. Shearsy. What happened in the lift with Peter Shilton? Oh. Can, can you tell that one or well, not? That's, if, if I can show you, that's a false tooth. Oh, right. So I've got me new. It was a big, I got me tooth knocked out by it. <laughs> I was on the floor and I was put on the floor and he ran to the lift and I got him in the lift. And he couldn't move because he was a big guy in the lift and I gave it to him in the lift. And, <laughs> he had a, when we come down in the morning, he had a big black eye. I didn't have any tooth, and I was in agony every time I breathed. And Laurie fined me a week's wages and didn't find him. <laughs> I was fuming. How does he remember that? God knows. Shears, he knows a lot of things about Saints, he doesn't he? On. It's the only player I never got on with, Peter Shield. Really? No, he's keeper I've ever played with. But he he always fun. strikes me as being quite a difficult kind of character. And if he was chocolate, he'd eat himself. <laughs> Here's one from Paul Blow. Who was the artist out of Mark Dennis, Mick Harford, or Tony Coton? Uh, Mick Harford. Right, without a shirt of a doubt. Mick Harford. Jack Palance, I call him. Should have played for England more as well, shouldn't Unbelievable. he? Unbelievable. Great first touch, and I'll tell you what, hard land. Yeah. Same. Who was the one Gazza was talking about last night? Billy Whitehurst? Now, Billy. I played against Billy. Another one. Yeah. Lethal Billy. Played Good player, for though. Oxford. Yeah. When he, he used to have a big drink problem, he, that's where it came from. He used to, if he got annoyed with people, he used to say, pick your window, you're leaving. <laughs> Seriously. Malcolm shot him, centre half at Oxford. He threw through the window in Oxford. 
in 1985, do you remember a couple of little Herberts coming round your house in Chandler's Fourth for your autograph? You were in the front garden trying to stop your daughter from swinging a bag of rabbit food round her head. When you saw that we'd already collected Chris Nichols' autograph, you referred to your then manager as that, and I can't really say, but you there's an expletive. Well, anyway, that was me and my pal Dan, and that's from Toby Collard. Remember that? I can vaguely remember it, yeah. It's so very, thought, yeah. he clearly remembers it. It's very specific, isn't yeah. it? She wasn't very old. That's got to be, that's got to be about 10 years ago. A 85, he says. Yeah, 85. More than that, is it? Sure, 85. That's more than that. 20 years ago, isn't it? Yep. No, not 20 years ago. More than that. Oh, that was, that was Conway Close. That wasn't Guildford Drive. Mm. That was, that was his mum. Ah, uh, okay. 85. She must have, she was born out, she was three years of age. <laughs> Swinging a bad, yeah, this, is, this is Mark's grandson here. Future boxing superstar. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the Golden Ring. The gold, at the Golden Ring gym in Millbrook in Southampton. We've got another question here from Matt Hardwick. Will you be sending a Christmas card to Aussie R dealers? <laughs> Certainly not. <laughs> I actually, we made it up with Ozzy, but he done me like a kip and he remembers the game at White Hart Lane when I got sent off. 53 day ban. Well, it was, it, it held the record for many, many he, years until Paul, in its, Paul Davis done Glenn Cockrell ah, okay. with the elbow and he got 56 days. I was out suspended, but uh, Keith Hackett sent me off there and I was just completely conned by it. And Jim Smith, our manager, oh, okay. went out the, and it was just after, not by the Falklands, and Jim Smith got fired with me because he, he went out uh, out of his dugout with Peter Shreves and said, we should have shot you with the rest of the bars. It's me in Argentina. Jesus, can't say that, can you? <laughs> um, Martin Cropper asked, was there any other clubs that you came close to signing for? Yes, I, I, Terry Venables, I almost signed for Tottenham and Trevor Francis scuppered the deal and that's one thing that really annoyed me. Terry came in, I went to Palace and didn't know uh, Palace paid at the time a couple of hundred grand and they'd come in 350 and Trevor didn't want me to go to Spurs and didn't tell me about it and we don't go on well and that really, yeah, that hurt me. Terry Venables told me recently. Didn't know that. Um, Let's have a little look. What else we got? Um, what team did you support as a boy? Well, I went to Millwall with my mate Swanee for a bit older deal, but I also went to Sellers Park uh, occasionally because that wasn't too far from me as well. But I think later I went down Millwall more. Yeah. Was, a lot of people on a lot of people on our page here thought, presume that you're a Palace fan. Yeah, well, I, we, I live closer, but my good mate Swanee was Millwall, and I went with him a lot. Yeah. So the, that was the old den. But I watched Palace as well. But the one we used to ate around there was uh, that blue flag. We ate it Chelsea. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they still and do, I'm obviously. Fortunate. He's a Chelsea fan. Oh, my oh, God. <laughs> um, do you remember playing for Reading Reserves for Palace when the ref really had it in for him? For you. Reading Reserves? Against Reading Reserves? Against, sorry, yeah, against Reading Reserves for Palace when the ref really had it in for you. I can't remember. No, it seems There's quite a, a lot of refs that had it in for me. <laughs> Someone says, no question, but please tell Mark, this is Dave Gould, please tell Mark that he and Dave Langham were the best pair of full bats I've ever seen at St Andrews. Thank you, thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> When I was in middle school in the early 80s, a boy in my class, Michael Cooksey, supported Birmingham City. He said it was because his sister was married to Mark Dennis. Is this true? That's very true. There you go. That, that's his uncle. OK. Yeah. Um, did you think it was all over when you got that nasty injury, you know, when you had your leg? Yeah, that kind of, I did because the AIDS were about at that time. I, 85, 86, and I wouldn't have a blood transfusion. Right. Because it, it wasn't safe, and I was I was in jeopardy of losing my life for about a week. I was in a hospital called Freeman in Newcastle. Yeah. And uh, no, that, that was a hard week for my parents and that. They had a picture, it's awful, I've seen the yeah. picture. Um, who else have we got here? What was it like? Um, no, I'm not going to ask that one. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I don't want to get into politics. Well, I, I, Alan, I'll, I'll say I don't. 
if it's bad, I won't answer. Alan Dennis asks, are we related? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. How close were you signing for Millwall for their first season in the first division? Very close. Mm. It was it come in Millwall for me, and they I was gonna they wanted me to sign from QPR, and they instead they bought me indoors. Right. Jim Smith would let me go. What was your favourite pub, or what is your favourite pub in Southampton? I bet it wasn't the Mason Arms in Swaveland. <laughs> I, mean, I don't think we can talk about that incident, but uh, no, it's, it's it was a thing that was to do with my ex-brother-in-law, yeah. uh, his grandma, his grandma went all kicked off in there one night and someone was almost fatally run over, yeah. but that was a, yeah. What, what was your favourite boozer though, back in the day? Uh, where did you used to go, when, when the, the old drinking school, where did they used to go? I, we got, went in the Fleming Arms. Fleming? Yeah. You, Hungry used, horse now, aren't it? Yeah, that's right. We used, to get, we used to go into Fleming Arms, but we used to go into town at Peppy Joe's afterwards, our yeah. away game, and mix with the supporters, which I don't do today. Nah. You know what I mean? Which is such a shame. Well, you know why? Because everyone's got these things, don't they? Mobile phones. Yeah. So, like, any any footballer that's out, everyone's like, Phil, right, sorry, this is the second part of the interviews. I just inadvertently stopped it by accident. <laughs> so, we're talking about pubs in Southampton, and you, you're just saying a black cat? Yeah, there was a black cat. Uh, that's now the McDonald's. That's uh, right. That's yep. the McDonald's now. That was a good year went in there. But we, we we went all around. It was a, the lads. But we used to the lads drinking night out was at the Concord Club. Yeah, we yeah. all went to the Wednesday nights at the Concord Club. And it's still going well now, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, J, Jamie. Uh, Jamie's run it now from his car, Carl you know, Matheson. You know Paul Myco as well, then, do you? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Does a DJ in there. My dad used to be a DJ in Southampton well, back in the that, day. We used to cut a rug in there. <laughs> and, it, him and Paul, my dad and Paul Myco used to do a lot of stuff together. Um, what else have we got? I think we're getting near to the end of the questions now. Do you, Simon Ketley asks, do you remember the pub we were in when England lost the Cricket World Cup final in Melbourne in 92? What yes. a night. Oh, I was in here fantastic, I remember that. I went, that was 1992. Yep. Lost, we lost to Pakistan. Yep, I remember um, I watching it. I was here in Australia and we went into the pub. I was, actually, when a few times I was in tears, but we just drunk ourselves into a sofa. I was gattered. Yeah, it was a real disappointing, wasn't it? Um, and I think, yeah, that's pretty much it, Mark. So, we, I think we got some lovely answers from you there. I'm just trying to think whether there's anything else that I want to ask you personally, but I think we've covered a lot of ground. I've managed to ask all the questions that people posted on the Brilliant. on the site. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll post it up there this evening. Um, but I'll just say from we've got like 35 odd thousand members on there. Really? And this, yeah, this is the first. That's amazing. This is the first time we've done anything like this. So um, it. It's a real privilege and really appreciate you giving your time. Um, and I'm sure all the fans on the on the site will, will appreciate it as well. Um, I'd just like to say thank you, Sean, for asking me down and doing it because they, they're still special them supporters yeah. uh, to me. And it's, it's a pleasure and privilege to do that for them. Nice one. Just well, hope we can win today. Yeah, well, don't hold your breath, mate. Really? <laughs> <laughs>